Okay, so today I'm going to be just doing something a little bit different that uh, might be a little bit interesting. So I've received comments uh, on my channel on certain videos recently where you guys have been telling me to or encouraging me to do book tags where I may not necessarily know the answer or, you know, something that might make me a bit uncomfortable, I suppose. This one's going to be a doozy. Today I'm going to be reacting to some of my favourite books that have received one star reviews on Goodreads. So um, be ready because I'm sure there are bound to be some big reactions coming from me. I do of course want to make the disclaimer that everyone of course is entitled to their own opinion. Not everyone's going to agree on the same book and thoughts and everything. Different people love different things, different people like different genres and all that kind of stuff as well. So take everything I say you know, with a grain of salt and just for the humour. We're going to start with my absolute favourite book of all time and that is Mistborn The Final Empire because I mean... I'm just a sucker for going right in with my absolute favourite, aren't I? So let's see what people have to say about my favourite book of all time and why they don't like it. I have three uh, partial reviews here, so let's take a look. So the first one says, Once a writer arose to create a new fantasy world, an interesting world with a unique magic system that challenged the genre. He failed. Goodbye! <laughs> Obviously, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Look, it's fine, but it's a little harsh. I mean, Mr. Brando Sando, you definitely did not fail. Well, the magic system is unique. See? There you go. That should at least warrant two stars. Um, and one of the main focal points in reviews I've read, I found the system dull, repetitive, and full of holes, just like his plot and characters. Excuse me? <laughs> how extremely, very, very dare you, and how rude. <laughs> Warning, this will be an angry rant review. Oh dear. Honest to God, I will never understand how this book is so beloved by all. I have been so painfully bored since the very beginning, hoping it would eventually redeem itself. The entire first section of the book is all political dialogue. Uh, that mostly doesn't even make much sense because the entire time Kelsia just hints at things without fully explaining them. Okay, Kelsia's not even in the prologue, so... Okay, and Kelsia is my guy. He was my favourite fictional character, my fictional boyfriend of 2020. So you come after my guy, we're going to have issues. <laughs> At least provide context in the review. I mean, I have no problem with you having an opinion and saying he doesn't fully explain it, but at least, you know, I hope you appreciate that it's explained as to why he can't. There's a reason why he can't say everything. Oh, well. Um, but that's the only praise I have to offer the book. I eventually threw it at a wall? about to start crying over here. You threw the final empire at the wall. Hmm. How very dare you. <laughs> and why didn't you just send it to me? You threw the final empire at a wall. No. No. And now we move on from fantasy over to middle grade sci-fi, Animorphs book number one, The Invasion. I thought that this book was a great setup for the series, amazing foundational building. It's not long, so we'll see if that reflects in the reviews. I didn't like this book. It scares me, and I can't forget about it overnight. Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to... <laughs> okay. I don't understand it. Uh, like, okay, okay. If a child read this, completely understood. If an adult read this... I don't necessarily understand. I feel like there are books that are a lot more scary, but hey, I mean, different people are sensitive to different things. I, for one, struggle to watch any horror film because I just, I just do. Um, but this didn't scare me personally, but that's okay. Everyone can have their own opinions. Just, it's surprising me because it didn't scare me at all. Um, the characters are scary and disgusting. How rude. Um, I am recommending not to read unless you love aliens. I disagree. 
I recommend that you read this book if you've never read a sci-fi and you love fantasy. The Animorph uh, characters that we follow, I think it's five children, something like that, they all have the ability, or are given the ability in book one to be able to morph into animals. So even though it's a sci-fi, I call it a loose magic system of a sci-fi world. Um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic. So I completely disagree with that. I don't find it offensive, but I disagree. Uh, next one, as someone who grew up on Animorphs, I assumed it would be bad, but in an enjoyable way. This, though, was bad, capital B-A-D, and weird. The book was written so blandly that a third of the way in, we still hadn't even morphed yet. It's called foundational laying. What do you expect? The series is, I don't even know, what is it, like 60 books long or something? It's called Foundational Building. And the thing is as well, um, I'm sure there are going to be comments that come up that um, saying this comment will cover them as well. I go into books, I don't want to know um, the premise of the book, but I always want to know the age rating and the genre because then I can have certain expectations going in. For example, if I'm going into any sort of a middle grade, I'm going to expect that it will be written as a middle grade book. It will follow a child protagonist. There may be plot conveniences. Where if it's an adult book, then I'm not expecting a plot convenience, for example. Or if it's a horror, then I want it to have horror themes in it. So for me, I want to know the age rating and the genre so I know the type of book I'm getting into. And with this reviewer saying, what was it? Uh, the book was written so blandly, I think that comes back to it being a middle grade. Not every middle grade is bland, not at all. But I think that sometimes allowances need to be made depending upon the age rating of the book. Very poorly written, crappy characters, interesting idea, I guess, which is why the series was so popular back in the day. The aliens all felt like something an eight-year-old would draw if asked to draw a monster. It's a middle grade. Like, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> we have to make allowances for middle grade. <laughs> okay, moving on. It is really simply written, I'd say, about a third grade level. It is middle grade. <laughs> Just, seriously, I'm sorry. Are there readers out there that go into books thinking, oh, yes, this looks like an adult book to me, and then read it and go, oh, no, it didn't read like that. One star. It's a middle grade. Uh, maybe I'm just too well researched with my books, but... I expect that it's going to read at a third grade level because that's what it's targeted at. Next up, we have Game Changer by Neil Shusterman. This is a YA sci-fi, and I absolutely loved it, obviously. So, let's... If I can get the paper, let's get into the reviews. More often than not, I love Neil Shusterman, or Shusterman, depending on how you say it, I say Shusterman. Uh, Shusterman's books, his writing style pulls me in, and I get so wrapped up in his stories that... Um, most I finish in one sitting. Game Changer is a miss for me. While the plot had potential, it needed more editing. Completely disagree. Completely, completely disagree. There are times where I do feel books need, you know, at least one or two more rounds of editing. Not with Game Changer. I didn't find that. Uh, there are too many difficult topics that are treated too lightly and some of the social issues felt too forced. Okay, I am going to comment on this because I've seen this a lot when people talk about Game Changer. So, I don't know if readers went into this book expecting that any time a social issue, if you want to call it that, came up in the book, that it was meant to be fully explored. But the thing is, again, I go in extremely prepared knowing an age range and the genre. This is a YA sci-fi, not a YA or adult contemporary with hard-hitting contemporary topics. It's a sci-fi. The focus is on the sci-fi elements. So the basic premise of this book is we follow a guy by the name of Ash who plays football. He gets knocked out uh, in a game very early on in the book and he is shoved into an alternate reality, and he ends up being shoved into multiple alternate realities along the way, which made for a really fun read. That is the premise of the book. That is what you should go in thinking, that we're visiting all these different realities and we'll see how we go, and not every time we visit a reality, if a social issue comes up, we need to explore the social issue. It's a sci-fi. It's not a contemporary, it's not a hard-hitting contemporary topics type book at all. So I don't understand a lot of people making that point about the social issues. Next up we have the middle grade horror Goosebumps series, specifically book number one, which is Welcome to Dead House. Alrighty. 
And uh, when I was a kid, this was my S word that we can't say. Um, this was my jam, this whole series. I'd inhale that S word and love it. I mean, twice in like three sentences. <laughs> Moving on. Also, the TV show, after a while, it was great. Now, I decided to reread the whole thing, but after rereading this one again, I decided to maybe not reread everything. I will try a few more for sure, but this was a huge disappointment because it's written for kids, of course, and I have to understand that and maybe rate this book based on that, but meh decided not to do that. I find it interesting that you already know this. You you said it in your review. It was written for children and I should rate it on that, but I've decided I'm not going to do that. Okay, so seriously, you have no excuse. You know, <laughs> you know it's written for kids, so come on. I mean, ridiculous. A lot of you guys know how much I love Brando Sando and anytime he is mentioned it just makes my day. But I also have an equal amount of love for Phil Stamper. So let's see what people have said about Phil Stampers as far as your take me. DNF'd and not going to regret it. Goodbye. I mean. <laughs> I didn't, I don't like the characters, especially the main character, and I really do not like the writing. What don't you like about the writing? The writing is really easy to read, so I'm just interested. What is it you don't like about the writing? I wish sometimes that reviewers would not just say something and not elaborate on it. So I don't like the writing, that's fine. What was it you didn't like about the writing? Uh, it's a very easy writing style to read, which I think is a pro, but some people prefer purple prose or flowery writing, so what didn't you like about the writing? Uh, and I'm so done with such repetitive young adult stories. I guess it's time to think twice when it comes to pretty, pretty covers. How rude. <laughs> I don't feel like this is repetitive at all. Um, there are a lot of YA LGBTIQ plus books, which this is one of them, uh, that are extremely repetitive, but I didn't feel like this one was. I felt like this one very much stood on its own two feet, but anyway. I didn't particularly like this one, and while I didn't dislike it, I don't know if I can give it anything over 1.5. Sorry, I guess. Among the things I didn't like, I can name the Insta Love, which apparently is something Phil Stamper is a fan of. How very dare you? <laughs> How very dare you assume something in the name of Phil Stamper? No, even I don't do that, and I love the guy. <laughs> no. And finally, the most annoying, cringeworthy main character ever. How rude. People have to stop recommending books saying it's good just because it's LGBT and speaks on heavy topics. Maybe this is enjoyable for an 11 year old who's just realized they're gay. Certainly not for me. Completely disagree. I don't think that I would ever recommend this uh, for an 11 year old. I love Phil Stamper, but there are some hard hitting contemporary topics that come up in this book that I don't think an 11 year old will be ready to handle as yet. So I completely disagree with your point of view there. I agree with your point of view that uh, just because it's an LGBTIQ plus book, um, it doesn't necessarily mean the book is good, but not with this one. With the one that you guys, who if you know, you know, is the book we don't talk about on this channel anymore because it was so offensive, <laughs> and I'm not just going to say it's good because it's LGBTIQ+, but this one was good. Next up we have Harry Potter, and my edition is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, or if you're American or own the U US edition, it would be Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, but either way, aside from some words being Americanized, the original author is English, uh, it's the same story. So let's jump in because I love this book. Okay, can 35 million book buyers be wrong? Yes. Goodbye. Taking arms against Harry Potter at this moment is to emulate Hamlet, uh, Hamlet taking arms against a sea of troubles. By opposing the sea, you won't end it. The Harry Potter Epiphenomenon. I love that word. I may not like your review, but I love that word. Epiphenomenon. Can we use that from now on? <laughs> uh, will go on doubtless for some time, as J.R.R. Tolkien did, and then wane. I don't I don't know that um, J.R.R. Tolkien's books have started waning. I wasn't a fan of um, The Lord of the Rings at all. I didn't like any of them. And yet, they're, if anything, I feel like they're gaining popularity more and more even to this day. <laughs> so... Anyway, the official newspaper of our dominant courier culture, the New York Times. I mean, this this reviewer is hmm, very well written, but very extremely passionate in their well-written-ness. <laughs> 
um, has been startled by the Potter books uh, into establishing a new policy for it's not a very literate book review. Excuse me. How rude. Pathetic. Really pathetic. Harry Potter is more of a Mary Sue than Aragon. I didn't like Aragon, so there you go. <laughs> It just wasn't for me. I, I didn't, don't personally hate it or have ill feelings towards anyone who does like it. It just wasn't for me. So, you know, I'm kind of glad it's not an Aragon. I don't know what Mary Sue is. Comment below and let me know. Uh, more than Nancy Drew, more than the worst of fan fiction I've ever seen. How very dare you. This is not fan fiction at all. It is much better than fan fiction. Not that fan fiction's bad. I love fan fiction. In fact, um, I used to read fan fiction a lot, as I said, prior to my booktube channel, and my sister currently reads, like, one fan fiction book a week at the moment. She loves them. They, they, some of them are really amazing, so how very dare you on both ends, to Harry Potter and to fan fiction. He's rich, popular, and famous for absolutely nothing of his own doing. Yes, he is, which means it's not his fault. He was born into the situation, and see, I'm getting passionate because I love Harry Potter. He was born into this situation, he had no choice, and he even says in book four, I don't want fame and eternal glory, so there you go, you deal with that. <laughs> um, he has the whole angsty part down pat. In book one? He's angsty in book one. Oh, honey, 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 don't read the rest of the series. Um... And get this, he fries bad guys when they touch his skin. Oh, I, I'm done. I'm done. I, 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 I. Why do I bother? And finally, The Woman Outside My Door by Rachel Ryan. This is an adult thriller. If you've been following my channel, you know how much I love this. This is my favourite um, adult thriller to date. And I realise that there are adult thrillers, YA, MG, and also that there are adult YA and MG uh, mysteries, and then there are adult YA and MG cosy mysteries. Just on thriller alone, this is my favourite thriller of all time, and it only came out this year. So let's see what people have to say and be completely rude about this book. <laughs> I am not a fast reader. And I finished this book in four days over Thanksgiving weekend. And that's a bad thing because I was also reading two other books at the same time and I don't get much downtime to read when I'm with family. I say all this to show how short the novel was. Is there something wrong with a novel being short? Honey? There's a lovely word called novella. I'd love to introduce you to it. This is definitely not a novella, but it could have been shorter. <laughs> uh, I couldn't tell initially because I was reading it on my Kindle, and the shortness of the novel speaks to how underdeveloped I felt the plot to be. How rude. It was an amazing plot. How very, 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 very dare you. <laughs> All right. Don't do it. What a weird, simple, boring plot. Goodbye. <laughs> You just, you just, you just can't talk to people who are like this. No, you just can't. I'm a weird, boring. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk to me about weird and boring? I have had to sift through a ton of thrillers that are boring as all get out. And when just when you get to the action-packed moments, they back out of them because they don't want to offend the reader. This one, boring. It's not worth it. I'm just going to move on. And just like the rest of the book was a very boring ending, definitely don't recommend. Well, that's fine, B. <laughs> you don't need to recommend it because I will. And now for everyone's favourite game that we like to call up, 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 up. These are some of the books that I spoke about that I absolutely love and that others apparently take quite a ton of umbrage with. What are your thoughts about these books? If you have read them before, let me know. And if you have any books that uh, you would like for me to look at reviews of and react to them on here, let me know that in the comments below as well. Thank you so much for all of your love, all of your beautiful comments. You guys have just been really amazing. So I just wanted to take time out to thank you for that. But in the meantime, letting you guys go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday and Friday, and I'll see you again soon. Mwah. Thank you so much for watching, and happy reading!